Hello, everybody, and uh, welcome to my first of many videos of how to make a core game. Yay! So, not many of you guys have asked me for this, but I'm honestly kind of tired of seeing stalling core games, so I am going to tell you how you can make your own. Um, as you saw in the title, this is only the temperature, so if you're, uh, I don't know, looking on how to build a core game, that will be coming up later in my how to build a core game series. But that also will have a little bit more bias because it will only be my building style and not yours. So I wouldn't recommend following it, but if you wanted to, you can. Anyways, I'm going to be showing you two different ways to make a temperature system in this in Roblox. So, the first way you can make a temperature system is actually pretty simple. <laughs> Hold on a second. Alright, there we go. Sorry about that. Yeah, but as you can see here, the temperature is rising one every second. That's pretty simple, right? Yeah, that's pretty simple. And it's honestly five lines of code. Now, yes, some of these temperature scripts that I'm going to write here for you guys today are going to be about a hundred or more lines, but that's not really important. Uh, uh, but that's not really important. <laughs> Anyways, um, so right now we have the simplest type of temperature system. Now, if I wanted a text in front, I could just do this and then put your text inside these things. I can't remember them right now. But I could just say temperature equals that. Yeah, that works. Now, this will simply just put temperature equals in front of the number. And as we can see, that's what it does. It's really simple. I need to anchor it. Um, and it's quite simple to do. As most people may know that scripts in here, they tend to do weird things. So if I were to duplicate this part, bring it over here, and then disable this script here, and then start it at a different time, well, we'll see what happens in a second. See, this one doesn't change. But this one does. But then, you also have the other issue of, well, simply enabling this. But then, uh-oh, they're not the same temperature. We have an issue here. So, now, what we can do. This is getting into more scripts. Now, I wouldn't recommend writing the script inside of the text label itself, but I'm doing it for the tutorial anyway. So, let's just say I have the temperature script, uh, I, let's just say I have this script here. Now, if I just take this, it's not really going to do anything. It's really not. And it's not going to do what I want it to either. So, what we can do, oh, I hope that that happened. What we can do is we can take a number value. Like this. Name it. Something. Or whatever you want your temperature value to be ma named. And then. Then you can just take the. Uh, uh, brain messing up. Then what you can do. Is you can take this. And. Really, you don't have to have this. Well, you can have this value. You can do workspace dot temperature, and then you can do temperature dot value here, and then there you go. You have this thing simply displaying the temperature 
Now, if I were to copy that over to this one, this one here, let's just say I did that. And then, oh boy, there we go. It's just going to say temperature zero for now. But, but as soon as I change this value to, let's say, 50, these two, oh, this script is still disabled. <laughs> Hold on a second. This script will automatically update both of the screens to what it is. Now, let's say I have it at 20. And there you go. They both update to say 20. Now, this is how we are going to do the global temperature system. Now, once we have this, we easily can make the core or temperature system really work. Now, all we have to do is put a simple script inside of here, inside of the temperature value. Now, this isn't what I'd prefer to do. I would prefer to do it in one script, but, you know, it's, it's something. But this we can call temperature main. Make sure if you want to use spaces, use underscores. Just so that way you can still reference the script if you need to. Now, what you can do here is, well, what we did earlier. But instead of the local value, we use a while loop. I'm just going to do this because it's easier for me. And then we can do script.parent.value plus equals, and this is another way to say one, or like plus itself plus one. So, what this will do is it will take this value, plus it by itself, and then plus it with this. Or it will equal itself plus one, basically. Now, if I run this, it should actually, let me see, yeah. If I run this, it should, in theory, go up by one every second. And let's see. And there we go. We have a temperature system that goes up every second. Now, uh, you might be saying, but Glitch, I want to have it customizable. I want to have it so that way the players can control it. And that is perfectly fine. And I understand that. And that's 100% reasonable. And, well, there's multiple ways of going about doing this. Because right now, we are in our simplest form. Which is literally just a while loop. And it can get simpler than that. But it also shouldn't get simpler than that as well. Because sometimes when it's simpler, it's just a little bit weirder. But, for the sake of this, we're just going to do that. So, what we're going to do is inside the temperature script, we're going to have a little table. Or let's just say, let's just call it the acronym of um, laser power per power. LPPP. Yeah, that, that works. And then we can just do this. Just write a bunch of numbers in here on how much progression you want it to have depending on the laser power. So, once you have that, you can do a simple this. This will reference what laser power it's really on. But we don't really have the laser power yet so let's get that real quick let's make a number value and call it laser power there we go now if we take the laser power value and stuff it inside of here then we have that make sure to set this to one or it will reference 
it will reference zero, the index of LPPP number zero, which does not exist. So let's test this out at first. Or let's test this out. So we see it's working as it was, but now for the moment of truth, let's see. If I switch this to two, in th in theory, it should go up by two. And there you go. It jumped from 19 to 21. And it's going up by two. Now, let's say I want it at four. There we go. Now it's going up by eight every second. As we intended it to. Now, this is a temperature script we can get behind. Now, all you have to do, once you're at this point, is create your buttons, which really isn't too hard. If you really wanted to, it could literally just be a brick. And for this, for the entertainment of you, I'm just going to make it a brick for right now, because, well, that's really all I have time for. <laughs> so, enjoy this quick time lapse time lapse of me making this. All right, now that we have our temperature script or temperature system here, now we can just play the game. And well, it should work like a regular temperature system. All right, here we are with our two temperature screens and our four buttons, which I totally forgot to on or I totally forgot to anchor. But it doesn't even matter because they don't save. Anyway, now, let's say we set it to 4. There it goes. It skyrockets. Now, let's say we want it at 1. There it goes. It's going up by 1. Exactly as we said. Now, oh, okay. Now, if we have it at a certain temperature for a while, you may notice that it goes up really fast. And, well, that's fun. But also, quite boring because you're quite literally just staring at a number going up. Now, we want something to happen at certain temperatures, but that won't happen currently. Let's fix that. Okay, so let's say... Okay, let's say that you want your core to start exploding about the time that, well, it goes up. Let's just say that. Like, let's say you want the core to explode at a certain amount of time. Now, what we can do is inside of here, we can make a, uh, let's just say, uh, scr another script. Did I do that correctly? I think so. No, that's a local script. We need an actual script. Sorry. All right. So, right now, we have a regular script. This we can call Event Trigger. Okay. Alright. Now, now that we have this, first off, let me explain what an Event Trigger actually is and why it's used in a lot of core games. It's literally the thing that triggers a meltdown, or a freeze down, or whatever event requires the temperature to be at a certain amount. Now, this is not very hard to do, and in quite honesty, it's really, it's extremely simple. Now, you could, let's just say, you have a beacon. Uh, just give me a second. 
I'm gonna make one. Now, let's say we have another script in here called Event Trigger. Uh, uh, <sighs> nice local script, the first one. Alright, let's say we have another script in here called Event Script. And this one's very simple. Now, all we really want is for this light to really just blink. That's all we really want it to do. So, let's say we want it to happen at a certain temperature. So, we can do cooler stuff. Well, all we have to do is do a while, a while loop. And then we have to reference the temperature and then make sure it's above a certain level. Let's just say for now uh, 500. And I forgot to put an if here. So there we go. We have our simple script. But this won't do anything to the actual thing at the moment. Right now it's just checking if the temperature is above. So, let's make this work. This toggle value will basically make sure that the light blinks. And if we put it inside of a that's tag, not tug. If we make sure that it's inside of this value, we can set it to what it isn't by saying toggle is equal to not toggle and basically this is saying because this is a bool value it is not equal to toggle and what is the opposite of toggle at the moment it is true but when it's false it is true and when it's true it is false this will cycle through now We put an else loop here because, well, we want the light to not be on when it's not needed, right? Yeah, I think so. So, we can do script.parent.enable equals false. And in here, we can do script.parent.enable equals true. Sorry, my typing skills at the moment is amazing. I know. And if we want it to turn off, we could do script.parent.enabled equals false. Now, it, it can be done script.parent.enabled equals toggle, but where's the fun in that? With this one, we are also allowed to do script dot 
parent dot parent which would be the part dot color equals color three dot new or from rgb if you are really like if you really like rgb values which i do so i'm going to keep it at this so now what we can do is we can do this and this is our finished alarm now we see if we run the game that it will in fact not be blinking at first it probably will start rolling away though because i'm stupid and forgot to anchor it oh it actually didn't roll away i'm surprised now let's wait for the temperature to become 500 what am I kidding? I can just change the value. That's not what I was doing. That, yeah, and see, now it is blinking. But the temperature is also at 600,000, so I don't know if it actually works. Let's just say, uh, this never happened, eh? Ah, yes, that's not what I want. No, come on. Okay, there we go. Now, we know that it turns off, but that also doesn't look right. But that's not what we're here for either way. This was an event trigger script. This event happened when the board temperature became more than 500. As we can see in a second, once the core reaches 500 degrees, in whatever you want it to be just not celsius because that's not that's not right not right at all once the core hits 500 degrees in whatever temperature form you're using the light will start blinking and this is how most little alarms those ones that sit on the desk and beep at you annoyingly are made all they do is check if the temp is above or below where it is supposed to be. Now, you see that, well, it is going where it's supposed to. Now, currently, at the moment, there's no way to make the core temperature go down. Now, this is a pretty simple fix. All we have to do is go into the temperature main and, well, add another thing local cooling tower and well uh hold on cooling tower protected i'm just gonna also name this lp lptt so that way it's easier for you to understand and i'm also going to label this and i would also advise you strongly if you are a new developer i would say label your stuff have this now we have this this is simple this is honestly really simple now all we have to do is this same exact thing but subtracting so script dot parent that is that is not what I was doing dot parent dot value minus equals which basically does the same thing as this but subtracts it and c p p t coolant pump uh coolant pump power tick i guess and then square brackets now we don't have a cooling power 
value yet. So, clone your laser power and rename the cloned version to cooling power. There we go. Now, we can take that and there we go. We have cooling power. And this will allow you to take the temperature script and, well, make it go downwards. <sighs> yes, you gotta love the power of being very slow in the brain with a computer. Alright, now, we have this. It is not doing anything right now, because both the laser power and the cooling power are the exact same. Now, cooling power, actually, I think it may have erred because, oh, never mind. Cooling power, if we go into this, we can see that it goes into the negatives. Now, that's a good sign, because that means we're subtracting from our initial temperature value. But, that may not be good. Now, how do we stop this? Well, let's just say a little thing that we had in our trigger script. Now, temperature mean. Let's just say we don't want it to go below a certain point. So, let's just say local lowest temperature equals and I really don't want my temperature to go below 10. No. Zero. Now, we can do this and then all we have to do here is well, if temperature script dot parent dot value is less than lowest temperature plus one. This is to make sure that we get the precise number. So, if it is lower than one then it will not do this. Actually, we need to do not, because this will return as a bool value, and the bool value is good. And they allow us to do not. Now, you may not have a temperature that actually allows you to go below zero degrees. Now, this is good. This is Absolutely fine. Now, we can set the temperature to, well, we can set the temperature to, or the cooling power to 4, and it will do absolutely nothing. It will go down, but it won't go down at the same time. Because it is subtracting it every time. Now, if we put this to 4, this will go up by 4 every second. Or at least it should. And I messed up. Boolean equals number. That is not correct. What did I do wrong? I have no idea. Oh. <laughs> I did something wrong here. I'm going to use a tilde. Or at least attempt to. I don't know if this is actually how it's done. I think it is. No. Okay. So, I am going to have to do this the weird way. It's literally just putting an else. This checks to see if it is lower than the lowest number. Then, if it's not, which this is what else means, if it is not, it will go down. My computer is screaming at me. Okay. This basically does the same thing as putting a not at the front of the entire if statement. So, let's see if this works now. There's no error this time, which is a good sign. Now. We can take the temperature and take the cooling power and we can set this to 4. 
and it will not go below zero. Regardless, it is going below zero. But it does not trigger and it does not go down more if it is below zero already, which may be a slight issue, but hey, it's working in a way. Now, if we set this to one, nothing happens. Well, because our laser power and our cooling power are the exact same. Now, if we set this to four, and we set this one all the way up here at cooling power to four, both of them will be fighting each other, and it will only add by four. Now, yes, this is an entire temperature system. This temperature system is as simple as it gets for an entire game. Now, this is the exact same temperature system I used in Computer Science Facility 1. And most of you guys know that's, uh, that's quite past us. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh boy. So, what we can do now is actually really simple. To get rid of all the scripts, all we have to do is take all the scripts we've written here and then put them in one script but we also still don't have a startup trigger or a, not a startup trigger a, a meltdown trigger so let's uh clone a script and just put this script in here now we have a meltdown that is not how you spell meltdown that is also not how you spell meltdown but close that is how- that is not how you spell meltdown! Alright, there we go. My fingers are very weird. So, we have the event script. Now, all we have to do is- Well, first off, we don't want the event to trigger more than once. But since we're just gonna do simple and trigger the script by, well, enabling it, we're just going to do while wait do do that's not a do that was a die di di okay now we have this which is just a while loop at the moment but it's going to get better i don't know what i'm saying anyways if you are using a bindable event, which is normally how I do stuff, you may notice that if you fire it more than once, it happens more than once. So, we want to fix that. And, well, you can do local event equals false, and that will only happen once. Now, we now can do workspace if temperature workspace uh script dot parent dot value is more than let's say two no one thousand then event or if event is equal false then workspace dot meltdown dot disabled equals true no that is wrong false okay this should work now actually it won't work yet event titan if event Sorry, everybody. My spelling is off right now. Equals meltdown. That's uh, okay. Equals true. Now, this will first check to see if the temperature is more than 1000. And that is our meltdown temperature. If it is, then it will trigger event. Now, event, we do not want it to disable. So, we well we don't want it to fire more than once if you're on a bindable event system 
which is typically how a lot of core games do it. But if you're not using a bindable event, that doesn't really matter. So now we just disable or undisable the script. Now, if we put this in meltdown, we can just do print meltdown. And then all we have to do is run the game and wait, I guess. So let's do that. Oh, yeah, that's right. Once again, don't forget, you can change this to four and also change the temperature to, oh, I don't know, <laughs> 100. That's way more. But now if we check our thing, we can see that it said meltdown. Now, it didn't say that before, but we did see that the meltdown script did start. Now, let's let's uh not do this incorrectly this time so we can actually see it disable or enable the script because that was kind of just fast and i don't know why it adds on to that but let's say the temperature is i don't know seven no four hundred fifty now we have the temperature at 450 we can set this to 4 and there we go it is off and now we wait the beacon is going off 